you guys made a starting lineup change tonight. What did you just kind of think of, uh, I guess, the decision to go with JaVale and, and what it did for you guys? Uh, I mean, we got two centers that play two different ways. And uh, sometimes uh, definitely Zaza comes in there and gives a different punch with his physicality and his smarts in the pick and roll, passing the basketball. And JaVel comes in and gives us a guy that can put pressure on the rim. And I felt like – Coach felt like we needed more pressure at the rim to kind of open us up a bit on the wings. And um, – but I thought Zaza handled it well. He came in, played extremely hard. And we're going to need both of those guys. No matter if they're starting or coming off the bench, we're going to need both of them to be solid and play good basketball. So, you know, we put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on starting. But some of the best players come off the bench and play huge minutes, so it really doesn't matter. I'm glad that uh, Dre, uh, both of them are getting minutes, and JaVale came out and played well. But we don't need both of them. Clay became the 10th player in uh, franchise history to score 10,000 points tonight. What's it like playing alongside a guy like Clay? Uh, it's amazing because he just really doesn't think out there. You know, he goes out there and just plays free, and um, it's contagious. And especially when we're going through ruts and mentally. Um, we out of it a bit. You could look at Clay; he's still playing the same way, and um, you know we respect that. I'm happy I get to play with somebody that puts in that much work and uh, displays it on the court every night. Kevin, you guys in the first part of this game, there was a, like a level of intensity that was almost like playoff-like, and it kind of put the other team, put the Clippers on their heels a little bit. Was it by design to get that fast start so you can get rid of all that talk about? The slow start, first quarters, and so forth. Um, really, the talk doesn't matter. Um, we did it because we just wanted to play better, uh, you know. And I think we did a good job of. Uh, they had 23 in the end of the first, and after that, they scored 30 every quarter. So, first quarter, you know, we got it out the way, but we got to also know we got four quarters of basketball to play. So, we're not impressed with giving up that many points the last three quarters. But we started the game off well. And now we got to put the full game together. Steve said that there were a lot of good things to build on from tonight's game. Um, do you agree with that? What did you? What are some of the things that you saw? I uh, seen that we were up 17 mm -hmm. a couple times, and we just let them back in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like we could have knocked them out earlier, and you know we had three turnovers there in a, in a row, and that got, gave them life. So. You know, we'll, when we uh, when we up that much, we just gotta be solid, make the right plays, uh, continue to hit singles like we always talk about, and uh, and know that you know if we up 17, the next play we might not knock them out, but if we get two or three good plays in a row, they might be done. You know, so uh, once we get to that, I think that's you know we we gonna take the next step and go to the next level, which we're already at a high level in my opinion, uh, but. Uh, that's what I seen tonight, and we executed down the stretch. Our second unit executed and started the second quarter, so that's a plus. And uh, you know, we got to keep pushing. How are you feeling? I saw you take a hit early on. I'm good. You, you I'm straight. straight. You did have the lineup change. Uh, looked like Kurt tightened the rotation a little bit, and then maybe got you in that second quarter a little earlier than the normal. Do you sense the coaches have approached these last 24 games a little more seriously, and do you react to that? No, they've been approaching it serious the whole time. I mean, it's, it's on us to go out there and execute the game plan. And obviously, uh, you know, coaches and players could be better. I mean, that's just what you want when you're trying to be great. Uh, but they've been, they've been locked in all season and uh, been challenging us to be a better team all year. So... I felt like they may have made a couple more adjustments with the lineups, but other than that, I mean, they've been on point all year. Prior to tonight's game, uh, the last eight games, you guys split those, and you, it seemed like you really take issue with people saying you, this team is struggling. No, I, don't, no I, I mean, I said that one time. I said it yesterday. I haven't been talking about that for well, hold on. longer hold than on, a day. Hold on. Dur during, during that stretch, okay. you would say, like somebody say we're struggling. Like, nah, nah, we'll, we'll be good. We're we're, we're going to get. Yeah. So it seemed like you know why 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 I'm why. Just, I'm just positive, mm -hmm. and I see what we can do. I see who we are. I see what type of players we have and how hard we work. So I just can't come in here and say that we're, you know, in a rut or things are going bad for us. Even if we are struggling, I know we can get out of it quick because we we got a mentally strong team. We got a smart basketball team and. 
we got smart coaching staff. So uh, I'm just optimistic every night going into the next practice that we're going to continue to get better. And I always took that approach to basketball. So uh, excuse me if I don't agree with you. Kevin, you, you always want to you know take one at a time, I understand. But is it a little bit easier to um, be fully engaged and when you know the season is starting to wind down a little bit and you know, the playoffs are coming, is it a little bit easier to, like, to get into that mode, of playoff mode, when you get to this point of the season? Tomorrow's never promised. And I feel, uh, <clears throat> I feel as though if we uh, – we got to take every possession um, seriously, and if if we want to get to where we want to get to, we can't skip any days. We can't fast forward to the playoffs, so we might as well just lock in to where we are today, because um, you never know what'll happen tomorrow. So that's always how we approach this thing. That's how we try to, and obviously, you know, our minds tend to wander. That's just how we are as humans. So. You know, it's hard for us to stay focused every second. You know, that's what you're fighting against, and that's what makes a really good basketball team is if you fight against, you know, thinking about other things. And um, so it's always about winning a possession each and every time you step on the court and practice, going every rep, trying to go as hard as you can, and and shoot arounds, doing the same thing. And then when you're done, working on your individual game. So it's a, it's a challenge every single day that you gotta you got to be mentally ready for. And, uh, you know, it starts It starts with, you know, games and practices, and we can't look down the line. We just got to focus on what's in front of us because if we don't, we'll, we'll look up and we won't be ready for when that show starts. So, you know, that's, a, that's how I look at this thing. Kevin, you guys obviously shot 63% tonight. Clay made his first seven. Steph went 10 for 12 in the second half. How much can the break sort of rejuvenate outside shooting? And, and is it, does that last or just kind of give you fresh legs for a couple games? Or I don't know. Uh, I don't think the break has anything to do with it. Those guys put in work. Um, they work on their jump shot. It's about repetition. So if you shoot as many times as you can, it's about trial and error. So if you miss him to the right, you'll figure it out. If you miss it to the left, you'll figure it out. So Steph shoots a bunch of shots every day. And if he's missing, he'll figure it out and try to correct it during his workout. Clay, Clay the same way. I'm the same way along with the rest of the team. So break or not, <clears throat> you know, you got to put the work in. And I think that's what this team does night in and night out, day in and day out in practices, shoot arounds, and, uh, you know, it happens, you know. And then also when you you see a guy make eight, eight threes and Clay start off seven for seven, you know, it's because they put that work in when, when y'all aren't around. So, um, you know, if you want to shoot well next game, you got to come in tomorrow and put some more work in.